Good morning, friends. Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm trying to get situated here. And I've got R2 back here. There's R2. Hey, R2. All right. Uh, we've got an alert. We've got a brand new resub, uh, thanks to our friend Vault Hunter Argus. Thank you, Argus, for all of your support uh, these last, it uh, looks like nine months. Thank you so much for uh, your support. Friends, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. My name's Ruel Gaviola. This is Tabletop Tonight, and what I'm doing today is Ruel's wrap-up. I meant to do this a couple of days ago, but we ended up just talking about Dice Tower West, which was totally cool. We had like a two-hour chat, which was uh, really nice. Uh, really appreciate y'all sharing your experiences. I mean, it seemed like over, like, Overwhelmingly, it seemed positive, which was great. Um, really happy to hear everyone had a great time at uh, Dice Tower West. Played games, connected with folks, made uh, made connections with uh, all of us here in chat, or not all of us, but a bunch of us. And also, I, I know uh, some people made a lot of new friends as well, which is great to hear. So again, thanks for hanging out today. Want to say hi to Slackfish, GB Glazer, Vault Under Argus, James is in the house, Hornus is here. Hi, friends. Um, I'm just going to wrap up the games that I uh, played last month. I played, um, I, it was like a total of like 30-ish something games, but I played some of them multiple times. So I think it's like 17 unique games uh, that I've played. So I'm going to rank those. Um, I've been doing this inspired by Rado. Uh, he does it every month. So I, I figured, you know, I'll, I'll jump on the, uh, the uh, uh, jump on the uh, bandwagon and uh, do it as well. It, it's, it's fun to look back because... I feel like I don't rank my, well, obviously I don't rank my games because we have a segment on the R&R &R show where I will rank my games. And I, I don't know, I'm very, like, the my my tastes change. I'm, I'm such an omni gamer. Like, you know, I have my set games that are like, you know, one through like five or whatever, but they're, everything else constantly changes. So I like to look back um, now each month and just sort of say, hey, Here's what I really enjoyed this month. Here's here are some other ones that I didn't quite enjoy. Um, so far, I've been since I've been doing this for the last like six or seven months or so. I'm very fortunate that I've played good games for the most part. There's only been a few that I didn't really care for, but for the most part, you know, I've been very very fortunate uh, to uh, be playing some really good games. Uh, Joe, let's go. Thank you, Joe, for the support. Again, we have analog alerts here on the channel for new and renewed subscriptions. Thank you, as always, friend. Uh, good to see you here. Uh, Slackfish says, having to rank everything is exhausting. Yeah, and that's... You know what? Let me see if this works. I, I was messing around with this earlier. Hopefully it works... Yes, it works again, uh, the uh, comment here. Yeah, having to rank everything is exhausting, and I agree, it, it can be a bit much, and I think that's why I put it off for so long. But I think the way I do it now, where I rank them each month, it's uh, not quite as bad, because I always look at it like, I, I don't want to do my top 100 games of all time, which is funny, because now Rado's talked me into doing it, and we're doing a combined list of 100 uh, games of all time. That took me a while to put together. And even though we're going with our list uh, over the next like couple of months, I can already see how things change. You know, like some of the newer games that are coming in. Oh, by the way, we're on a hype train. Thanks friends for the support. We've got a hype train going on right now. Let me get the uh, analog alert for the hype train. Choo, 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 all aboard. Uh, yeah, uh, bits, subs, gifts right now are going towards the hype train. We're on level one. Let's see if we can get to level two folks. Again, thank you for your support. To Live in Dice in LA just cheered 100 bits. That's part of the hype train. Thank you, To Live in Dice in LA. I don't know if Evie's awake, but we'll say, Hello, Evie. Hello, To Live in Dice in LA. You spend bits. I come out of hibernation. I'm Benny the Bitspare. Thank you for joining us this morning as Ruel wraps up and ranks his games from February. Bye. Uh, as you'll see, uh, as you see back here, I, I had to put this out here. I cannot thank you all enough in the Discord who contributed to this. Uh, my friend Patrick is also in the Discord, and um, uh, I've known him for years. And he, I, I didn't, he told me not to look at it, and I did not. I, I swear I didn't. Um, he had like a little private message or like a hidden message <clears throat> to everyone in the Discord, and uh, it turned out to be y'all were planning this. And I, uh, like I told Michelle when I opened it at Dice Tower West. It was totally caught, totally caught me off guard, surprised. Like I was really choked up. So thank you. And I want to announce that Michelle and I are going to start this tonight, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, right back here on the on a tabletop tonight. Um, we're going to do, it's like, I had no idea what, the, I have not built a Lego set in years since my niece and nephew were little and nothing along this scale. Whoa, uh, R2, some now. Uh, so this is apparently comes in like little bags. There's like different bags for each little part. 
like the the you know the dome, his head, his legs, all the little bits. So we're gonna take the first like couple of bags, open those up, and um, build it. And we're gonna do this over the next couple of weeks. Um, or I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, I want to do it like every Monday, sort of like do Maker's Monday, right? Um, so we'll we'll see. Uh, we're gonna start tonight though, because we're super excited. We wanted to start it this last Monday, but I was like super tired from Dice Tower West and Michelle was catching up with work as well. So again, I cannot thank you all enough for uh, the, the kind, your kindness and your generosity. Okay, I'm gonna catch up with chat. Um, Jill says, uh, Dice Tower West looked like a fun, glad everyone, yeah, it was, it was a great time. Um, there, were, there were some, you know, we had, uh, I know a lot of people were a little concerned and rightfully so about, you know, the mask mandates and everything like that. But for the most part, everyone kept their masks on from what I saw and, um, uh, you know, so knock on wood, so far no reports of outbreaks or anything like that or things. Uh, Vault says, I never rank my games. Um, wait, where is that? Yeah, I never rank my games. How could I possibly pick a favorite child? And that's what's funny. That's I, I feel like that's part of my, like, why I resisted for so long. Like, you know, I, how could I rank one above the other? And especially... You know, can you, I mean, I mean, these are silly little things, honestly, um, ranking a hundred top hundred games, because given the situation, like I always look at it like uh, it's, I can't do it objectively because given each situation, it's going to be different. Like, you know, y'all know how much I love Twilight Imperium. I'm not bringing that to family game night, you know, um, but I'm bringing Vegas Switch and Wagers and that's going to be the best uh, game from, uh, you know, this situation or, you know, something like, uh, do I bring um scythe to a game night knowing that there's no one that's ever played a modern board game or do i bring kohaku or you know or do i go see my friends who are hardcore you know who've been in the hobby while they consider them hardcore gamers am i bringing ticket to ride for to them probably not so it's very situational very very subjective um uh, obviously and um that's why i don't i i don't know it's really tough for me to rank uh so i i get it vault i i definitely understand see where you're coming from uh, let's see. Maybe I'm not gonna say it out loud. Also, um, Zhao is in the house. Hi, Zhao. Um, do, 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 don't we have our favorite games and kids not a parent? <laughs> James, hey, I'm not gonna say it out loud. Just not also not a parent. Hey, Linnaeus, thanks for joining this. Yeah, so, um, just hanging out right now. Again, we're at the tail end of a hype train. I don't know we're on level one, but thank you so much for all the support as always. Uh, one more shout out. I wanted to shout out Legends. Um, I don't think he's here, um, but he did this really cool thing. Uh, he had these printed out and I, I was able to, he was kind enough to give me one at Dice Star West. This is the Legends 7 challenge. And these are seven different board game challenges uh, that um, you do during the year. I'm going to try to, I think I'm going to retroactively do a few of them because it's already March. Um, but like the alphabet challenge uh, game from each uh, letter of the alphabet in order. So obviously I'm going to start with abandon all artichokes and end up over here. Uh, the block challenge is play 22 different games three times each. Uh, through the years, play a game from each of these years, 2011 through 2022. Uh, Cult of the New Challenge, you're going to play... 50 new games to you, not necessarily brand new games, but games that you haven't played before. Um, and then the top five, you play your top five games. Um, like as I was saying the other day, like I have a feeling that it'll be tough for me to um, do Twilight Imperium this year just because of schedule wise. And I mean, that, that's always tough to schedule that game, but um, Legends came up with a great idea to say, hey, you know, pick the top five for you and Michelle and then play those, which which I think would be uh, definitely doable. Uh, Michelle and I love this one, the Purge Challenge. We're trying to purge games. Um, we're trying to purge 22 uh, games this year. I'm very happy that I've recently purged, of, I think, seven games. Thanks to my friend Daryl B. Gaming. Uh, he helped me actually sell some games uh, online, uh, which I'm terrible at. I don't know why. I just never have success with it. And he knows where all the places, like either Facebook or, I don't know, Reddit or whatever. He He's really good at selling his games. So I said... Daryl, if you help me sell games, I'll give you like a small cut of, you know, whatever. And he's been very kind uh, doing that. And then finally, the Be Unique Challenge. Uh, this is play 122 unique games, uh, which is going to be interesting. Um, just be, well, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to do more um, in-person gaming as the uh, year continues, right? Hopefully as things continue to get safer, I guess. Um I know that our local gaming meetup has been up for a couple of months. Um, I haven't attended just because... Um, you know, I really, it was like, you know, I, I wanted to wait until on the Omnicron thing sort of went away and 
I'm just going to play it by ear. You know, I'm very fortunate. I still have uh, Michelle to game with mainly. Lauren, we haven't uh, game with much lately just because, you know, she's out in the real world now after college and she's working and uh, adjusting to uh, adulting. And um, uh, hopefully um, I, we may see her this weekend. I'd, I'd love to play some games uh, with her because uh, we got a lot of new stuff that I know she hasn't played yet. Uh, Slackface, uh, yeah, if you try to imagine I, if offered, would I rather play A or B, but that glass over the fact no, you know, I got to put this up. That's a really good point. Um, if you try to imagine if offered, would I rather play A or B? But that glosses over the fact that so many games are hard to get to the table because of time or audience. Games aren't easy to find time for. Probably get unfairly dinged in that kind of test. Yeah, that, that's that's so true, right? Again, it's where, oh, what's the situation? You know, is it like a family game night? Is it a hobby game night? Is it just some random week night after work? Um, is it on the weekend, you know, during breakfast or, you know, whatever. They're just, it, it's really, again, it's so subjective, but um, it, it's a fun exercise. I, I did have fun doing my 100 and then combining that with Rados. And, you know, we're doing our, our combined 100 for the R&R. &R. So uh, obviously his skews a lot heavier than mine. Um, he is really in those dry, deep Euros, which is great because then I come from a different, more om, um, like an omnivore, or omnivore, omnigamer, um, perspective because he he doesn't he really doesn't like those uh heavy conflict games and stuff and i know i have a few on my list uh coming up that are definitely direct combat you know like you'll never see blood rage on his list and that's like one of my top 10 games of all time so it's a really fun exercise to do and i'm, I'm look i'm excited for y'all to see uh, what else we have in store uh vault has sold a lot of a, a couple of games on bgg marketplace i've i don't think i've had any success with bg i honestly i haven't tried much I put a couple of games up there, but I think I might have like charged too much and I didn't get any response. Oh, Linnaeus has a great point. Uh, for me, it's is it a solo game? Solo games are so much easier for me to get to the table for obvious reason. Yeah, I love solo variants. I've been a huge, um, and, and I, I've told this before. I've been a huge proponent of solo games since I got into the hobby because that's how I got into the hobby was I got Pandemic. Michelle and I were really into the theme. We watched Will Wheaton play, thought it was cool. I loved the gameplay and Michelle really wasn't into it. So I just soloed it for like a month straight. Absolutely love uh, solo games. And it's always, always good for me to, um, well, or it makes me happy to see um, them come out. Folks, I'm gonna get into, uh, I'm gonna ta start talking about my 17 games. I think it's 17 games that I played last month. Uh, so we're gonna do this. Um, Sort of like how I do on the we do on the Rod Show, we sort of like do this live recording or whatever. But I would like to continue chatting um, as we we go forward here. I'll probably save some of the comments for later after I do the list. But I don't know. I I don't know. I, I'm still trying to find my way around this. Do I want to do this Rado style where he just does this live recording and then like you know edit it for YouTube and stuff? Like you all know, like you've been watching me for. Year, over, almost oh my gosh almost like two years i just like to hang out and chat and you know do that so maybe we'll stick to that i i don't know we'll we'll see let me see uh hi amanda good to see you amanda hello chat from amanda welcome amanda panda you know what? hey i'm gonna i'm gonna be good i'm gonna shout out amanda panda yay find amanda panda bruno oh there's a bruno fan too and a hydrate thanks james uh james says uh, you do it do it yourself yeah thanks james i i i figure that's um, for those who just joined us, I, I'm trying to figure out like how I do these uh, wrap ups where I talk about or I rank the games I played over the last month. And I'm just, you know what, you're right, James. Just do my style. We're just gonna kick it and um, talk about the games and, and rank them. And uh, I will chat as we go. So I, I really do enjoy that, you know. Um, let's see. Linnaeus has a quick comment here. I love solo games for three reasons. I get a take game to the table anytime I want. I can play at my own pace. I can learn a game solo. It makes it easier. You know, Linus, those three are exactly why I love solo games. Um, I think I would switch my your number one with my number two, or number one and two. So mine is I can play at my own pace. I've noticed as time goes on and, you know, a little more gray comes in the beard that I am slower at games. And... I've always felt that, I don't know if it's pressure or I just, I don't like to slow slow down games. And I feel like sometimes when I play multiplayer, I don't make optimal decisions all the time. And I, I don't want to take that time away. You know, I feel like I want to keep the game going. And, and that's just that's just me personally. So I like playing at my own pace. And one thing that's great about solo gaming, 
if I've got to do something like I'm playing a game, oh, got to go answer the door, go take care of that. Or, oh shoot, I forgot to do some emails I got to answer. I can take an hour off, do that and come back to the game, right? So that's always a good thing. But you're right, you can get a game to the table anytime you want. Again, all you need is table space. And then finally, I can learn a game solo and makes it easier to teach to others. Absolutely 100% agree with that. I love that about solo games. Now, having said that, you know, a lot of times solo games are a little slightly different than multiplayer, but it really does help. Um, Linnaeus, I'm sure it does for you too, just to be able to put the pieces out and see how they actually move rather than like watching a video or reading a rule book or, you know, whatever. If there really is something, again, that tactile sensation is like, oh, I'm gonna move this piece here. Oh, I need to play that card there and stuff like that. That's what I love about solo games. So yeah, thank you, Linnaeus. That's so, so, so true. Um, gonna catch up on chat here. Uh, Amanda says, and uh, you know, we were talking about how I'm gonna be doing these, um, my wrap ups and I've been sort of, uh, I'm gonna stick to the formula. I'm just gonna hang out and chat. I think what this is what makes Twitch magical. The interaction with chat is what I love about Twitch versus YouTube. Yeah, and what I do with the, I uh, everything I put on Twitch, anytime I stream it, well, most of the times it'll go over, I'll export it to YouTube, sort of like as an archive and you know, anytime publishers wanna find their games, um, that we've streamed, it's easier for them to find on YouTube because it stays there. Whereas Twitch, I think we have like 30 to 60 days and it goes it goes away. Um, and I always, I, I always wanted, I was thinking oh, I should edit these down, the gameplays and stuff, but I'm like, you know what, Amanda, Amanda James, y'all are right. You know, this is what Twitch is all about. It's about live things and it's about the live interaction with chat and just hanging out. And, um, you know, if you see it on YouTube as an arc, hopefully you'll see it on YouTube and get interested in, or you'll get your curiosity peaked and come over to Twitch to see it done live. Um, let's see, continue on here. Uh, James says, whoa, where is that? What happened? Oh, there it is. Uh, Hatron's Wall is great solo because I'm not AP prone, but the design of the game is all about chaining, so great solo. Do not feel bad about my AP to puzzle out. Same for Juicy Fruit. Yeah, Juicy Fruit was surprisingly uh, puzzly. I, I really enjoyed that. Hadrian's Wall, gosh, I need, I meant to ding uh, the uh, um, publisher the other night because uh, they were supposed to send a copy like weeks ago and it just hasn't shown up. And, you know, I don't know what, what's going on with that. I, I really, I'm so looking forward to Hadrian's Wall. Um, Linus, I can get a feel for how the game really plays even with the slight solo difference. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And uh, Vault says, I got the Isle of Cats expansion a little while ago from Kickstarter, but I haven't gotten to play yet. Been busy. I'm waiting for a few other things for Kickstarter, but I don't think any of those will be delivered until late April at least. Uh, Zhao says, uh, Double Hand of Solar is the best way to learn medium way. Yeah, that's another. That's a great point as well. Like it may not be like a, uh, like a true solo variant or whatever, but yes, uh, the heavier games that I play, you know, when I'll learn them, I will always do that play two hands and like, you know, try the different, all the different actions, right? If there's like five different actions you can do on your turn, I will be one player, try to do one action, then the second player, let's try to do a different action and keep going back and forth until I get a good sense of it. That's a really great point. Okay. Um, hey, this is what we're doing today. Look, Nightbot says, Rails Rapper, ranking the game board games I played last month. Uh, Vault also says the tactile thing helps, but once or twice I've had to look up videos and understand rules out. Yeah, and that's, I think that's the best way to learn games, at least for me personally. I want to uh, have the rule book, have a video up just in case, and then have the actual game laid out. And I will just, I like to learn rule book and, you know, actually doing, having the pieces out and stuff. But you're right, for those certain rules, like just seeing it, uh, the the video. And a great example, actually last night we played Hamlet. Um, Daryl and I, Daryl B. Gaming and I did a sponsor stream for Mighty Boards uh, Hamlet. We, uh, this is totally my bad. I had sent Daryl an older version of the rule book and it was the one I was going off was the latest one, which is right here, which is totally different than what Daryl had learned. I felt so bad, you know, like in his rule book, there was nothing about donkeys, right? And this one had donkeys that helped move in. And I said, oh yeah, so you're donkey. And he's like, donkeys? He said, that's something. I was like, oh my gosh. So we compared rule books. I was like, oh man, I'm so sorry. So. We started going over it. Then I, you know, I was like, you know what? Check YouTube. Thankfully, Rado had a video uh, playthrough of Hamlet, and I was like, okay, let's watch this. And and just watching like ten minutes of his video totally cleared up a bunch of stuff for Daryl and myself. So that was great. So there it is. Yeah, videos definitely help. 
Um, I uh, I watched your play of Isle of Cats Explore and Draw the other day on YouTube in preparation. Oh, cool. Oh, I'm glad it helped to live in Dyson, LA. Yes, um, Isle of Cats Explore and Draw, a lot of fun. And I think I still have the prototype. I don't think I got, I don't think I had to pass it on. I, I think I was able to keep it. So um, I know Michelle and I played it once or twice after we did our live stream. Um, but oh my gosh, such a good game. Um, okay. Is that the Jake Michaels in the house? Did I just see the Jake Michaels? I thought I saw him pop over here. Uh, or at least Manda said hi to him. Where is that? Oh, Drowsy's here. Hi, Drowsy. Um... <laughs> Slack face. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, so treat it as an archive, Linnaeus says, uh, my the the wrap up, and then um Slack says, I really like the archive, though sometimes I'm watching and forget that I can't talk to you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Oh, uh, what's this? Uh James said, anyone watch Oh, I didn't watch that. I saw that uh, Jazz had done that with his daughter playing the game. So that, that is cute. Um, it's a hobby game. Can't wait to check that out. Okay, let's get down to business. We are going to be talking about the... Let's see if I can do this right. Oop. Yeah, look, these are the 17 games. Uh, it says 16, but it's actually 17, friends. And you'll see in a moment here. The games that I played last month in February of 2022, I'm ranking them uh, from worst to best, but... Again, like I've said, I've been very fortunate. None of these games are bad that I've played uh, when I was ranking them, but some are better than others, in my opinion. First one is Kahuna. This is an older game uh, put out by Cosmos by uh, designer Gunther Cornett. And if you I don't, have you all played this one, this was an interesting one to me. It reminded me, uh, it's got, it's an area majority game, area control. And you're laying down pieces here trying to connect the islands and uh, eventually have the most islands under your control. And you, you do it by um, uh, hand management. So you play certain cards to lay down pieces. Uh, these are just from BGG, the uh, game photos here. Um, I played, it's a two player only game. I played with Daryl and right off the bat, we could tell, and, I, and then later on I confirmed by reading BGG, there is a runaway leader problem in this game. Like Daryl, um, there's like, I think it's three rounds that you play and you score after each round. After I think the second round, that third round was pretty much meaningless. And Daryl and I was like, there's no way I could catch up. And I was like, we don't even really need to play the third round. But we did. And of course I lost. And there, I know that BGG said, or people on BGG were talking about that runaway um, leader problem. So I don't know. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, one thing that was cool, it sort of reminded me of a Reiner Knizia game. In fact, that like each decision point, I mean, it was really simple and easy to learn, but yeah, there's definitely a, a ton of strategy here. And, but the thing is a couple of mistakes and you're out of the game, which I made and I was like, oh, that's a bummer. But anyways, not a bad game. Um, it's in the Cosmos two player um, uh, line that they do. So it's like a similar size to like, you know, if you know the box of like um, Emotep the Duel, or, well, this isn't a Cosmo game, but um, Patchwork, It's that's that box size. I'm gonna hydrate, folks. Thanks again for hanging out. This is um, ranking the games that I played in um, February. Wanna say hi to Gator Dave. Hi, Gator Dave and Panic Games. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so let's move on to the next game on the list. Number 15, Football Highlights 2052. And here's the video I did, uh, soloed it. I'm, I love, love, love Baseball Highlights 2045. One of my top 10 games of all time, or top 20 games of all time. One of my all time favorite deck building games. And I thought I would love Football Highlights as much. I did not. Um, I, it just felt clunkier to me. Um, there's this new thing where you're like trying to line up football helmets against each other. You can see like, uh, you see the two cards up there. Like they're literally lined up against each other and you have to figure out did your offense or defense play the right um, uh, segment of the field, and or, or you know, um, did you were you able to burst through or whatever? It's it's fine and it's got it has football ish elements. Um, again, I liked it. I didn't love it. I just feel like baseball highlights is such a cleaner design. You play six cards and that's an entire game of baseball. This football one, it's you play fifteen cards per half. So it's a little more in, um, it's a little more, 
uh, again, because you're going from play to play, you're still playing like four downs. If you know American football, you have four downs to uh, get a first down, or in this case, to score. It has a lot of the baseball highlight stuff. Now, having said that, I, I you know, I, I was, I'm lukewarm on it. Um, I, I posted this on Twitter, and uh, a friend of the channel and friend uh, Brian, aka uh, Dead Last Again, said he was the same way, but after a few times playing it, he his opinion changed and he really enjoyed it. So. Perhaps I need to give this another shot, and um, um, I may like it better. We we shall see. But anyways, that's our, my number 15, Football Highlights 2052. Moving on to number 14. Whoops. There it is. 14 is Walkie Talkie. Uh, a brand new game from Devere. And I've actually played this a couple of times. Uh, the first time I played with Daryl B. Gaiman, I, we got the rules wrong. And it was my fault. It, it was totally my fault. I, I misread the rules. Thankfully, Marcelo from Devere uh, emailed me. I, I, we're, we're friends. We actually, fun fun fact, Marcelo and I, um, we had not seen each other in like 20 years. We had gotten to high school together, and it turns out all these years later, we're both working in the board game industry. Uh, he works in marketing. He's done it for many, many years for a couple of different companies. Right now for Devere, and I, I'm a content creator. So it's just funny how uh, the you know um, things happen in life. But anyways, he he called me up, or I mean emailed me. He said, well, um, Great playthrough with Daryl, but um, here, here's what you did wrong. I was like, oh, my bad. So here, you're, it's a cooperative game. You're trying to get through all the hands in your card and your, and your partner's cards. You put a, you play a card either to the letter or the color there. They have to you know either put, like, in this case, I could put down uh, an R uh, that's in my hand or that green um, uh, card there. If I put the green and it's next to the, uh, you put on the color there, now you have to come up with a word that starts with E that relates to the color green. Or if I put the R down there, now you have to come up with a letter that or word that starts with R that has to do with the color yellow. Way more challenging than the first time where me and Daryl were just playing, oh, I'm playing an R, Ruel, I'm playing a yellow, Sun. It was way too easy. This, this is the way to do it. It's challenging. It's only like a, a two minute game. It, you have like, I think maybe 90 seconds for two players and you get 30 seconds per player on top of that. So super quick game, fun little filler. That's walkie talkie from Devere. That's my number 14. Okay, uh, let's continue. The next one on my list is number 13, Super Mega Lucky Box. This was like my number one game. And was it maybe two months ago or so? I still love it. Uh, this is, let me see. Oh, I'm playing this one with Amanda during Gaviola Game Night last month. Well, uh, that's a monthly event where we do extended live plays. And, oh, I just noticed it looks funny. Like, you can see hands right uh, under me here. Maybe I should make this thing, this part a little bigger. Cover that up. Okay. <laughs> Looked like I had, like, four hands. Looked like a Ruel the Octopus. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Amanda and I played this during Gaviola Game Night. I actually played this with Michelle. Um... Uh, at a meetup as well. And I think we, did we play this at Dice Tower West? I don't know. Oh, anyways, it doesn't count in Dice Tower West. We're talking about February. Anyways, fantastic game. Bill Walker Harding, praise be. Love, love, love this. And uh, Dwalzy says, very school of art rock. Yeah. And you know, Game Right, they put out great games. I, I really like this because there it is. Uh, it says Super Mega Lucky Box on the cards. It really does remind us of um, School, not School, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock font, that 70s, uh, show absolutely love it um if you like silver and gold you'll like uh super mega lucky box it takes away the polyomino aspect of it but it ha it's like super combo-y you're just comboing numbers and stuff i i really really enjoy this game big fan and it's a big family hit and uh hit with all of our friends and family so let's move on to number 12 lost cities roll and write um i don't have any video or um pictures of this i played this with daryl two players this one surprised me again it's a reiner kenichi game so i'm sort of like uh, biased I i'm thinking i'm gonna like it but i heard a lot of so-so things about this like people weren't that impressed by it i really enjoyed it i thought it was great um you have <coughs> your <coughs> six-sided dice your uh ten-sided dice just like in lost cities you're going up the tracks and you put numbers down starting as low as you can and it either has to be a matching number or it has to be a number that's higher. And eventually you're going to run out of ways, uh, places to put your numbers. So if you can see here, this player started in the um, this color here. I think it's yellow. Started with three, went to five, and can go up, uh, made it up to seven. Obviously, uh, ten is the highest. Um, and then you have the different colors. So 
it's a shared pool of dice. The play, active player rolls. They get to pick their choice, and then everyone has to choose from the rest of them. And at any point, if you don't feel like the numbers or the colors aren't right, you can go to the rightmost track and start going up the artifacts track and um, also this one here. And you'll notice um, there are negative points uh, here. So as you're going up this track, you're actually going to start getting positive points if you go all the way up here. What's interesting, if you go up this track and you go all the way, go to the hunt on uh, this one, you get 100 points. But if you scratch it out, you get zero. So it's a nice little press your luck game. I love the fact there's no my dice mitigation in this game. What you roll is what you get, and you just have to make agonizing decisions. And I think that's why I liked it, because it does have that. If you played the uh, Lost Cities um, original card game, it's all about agonizing decisions, and that's what I like about this one. I think it's I think it's underrated. Um, I, I feel like it got sort of a bad rap for whatever reasons, but the good doctor, in my opinion, has come through again with Lost Cities rolling right. And Slackfish says, I got this for my family to uh, get together. Nice. Uh, did you actually play? Oh, no, uh, next week. You're, uh, Slackfish is getting ready to play. Awesome. Okay, let's move on. Not number 11, but number 12A. Uh, it's Splendor. Why did I uh, put a 12A? Glad you asked, Ruel. Um, I had originally done my list, and I had 16 games, and then I was review. I was going back, and I, was, I realized I forgot to add Splendor to the list, and... I'd already made all the graphics, you know, all the uh, graphics below that have the, uh, you know, uh, publisher's name, designer's names. And rather than trying to reorder or anything, I'm just going to say this is 12A. <laughs> so, Splendor, uh, D Michelle and I play this during Gaviello Game Night. As you can see, we're playing with our little gems that we got down here. Thanks to our uh, friend from Discord who sent a really nice set. And we really appreciate it. And we, we tried it and it was fun. It was like... You didn't have, we had the poker chips here for reference, but we actually used the uh, little uh, gems that, uh, co color coordinated gems for this. And it was a lot of fun. Michelle and I have always loved this game. I think it's one of the best two player games out there because it's so quick and um, it's, you know, basic engine building. Um, but it's always a lot of fun. Uh, it's a race to 15 points. I've read some places that talk about the first player advantage, um, but. You know, it's such a casual game. Like, we're not going to sweat it. Like, if if one of us feels we got hosed, we just play it again. It's 15 minutes for a two-player game. Softie Neurasia, it was you. Yes, thank you so much. There's Softie Neurasia is the one that hooked us up with the uh, gem. So, so cool. Um, James says, I was not super impressed by Lost City's Roller Right. It was good, not, but not great. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a great game. But I think it's a really nice little um, solid uh, roll and write. Sort of along the lines of like, shoot. Now I forgot. There was, a, there was one by Renegade that came out a while ago. that, that the, It was like the Hex Roller or something like that. Which I thought was good, but not great. I think Lost Cities is along there. And um, I, again, I'm probably a little biased because I love uh, Kinesia games. But anyways, back to Splendor. Uh, of engine building. You start with, you just pick gems every round. You're trying to convert those gems into those gem cards. Those gem cards allow you to get those gems for the rest of the game. It's like automatic. It's engine building, and um, it's it's brilliant. I, I think it's such a great design. It's uh, uh, an ongoing. It's an evergreen title. It's a, it's an ongoing favorite. So that's my number twelve A Splendor. Number eleven, Whirling Witchcraft, a new favorite. Uh, this one uh, played a few times last month. Uh, most recently uh, during Gav Gavi Little Game Night with Amanda Panda. Um, Speaking of engine building, this is almost an engine building slash engine wrecking. Um, well, not wrecking, but you know, you build your engine, you create, uh, you're gonna pump out a bunch of new ingredients, put those in your cauldron, and you give those to your opponent, hoping to overwhelm their workbench, which is their player board there. And as you play along there, uh, let me see, let me just fast forward a little bit in the video. There's Matt and I passing each other's cauldrons. And then anything that spills over you, uh, your opponent scores um, if it spills on uh, onto your workbench there, and um, wait wait yeah, and you're, it's a race to five. I've said this several times. When you learn it, when you play it, it is basically the classic episode of I Love Lucy, the Chocolate Factory. You're pumping out ingredients or chocolates, and Michelle actually always says that it will be the gr best uh, re theme in this game is the. Uh, I love Lucy um, chocolate factory. So you pump out uh, ingredients and if you if they spill out on your workbench, the game is over. You've lost because you cannot um, use those. In you have no space on your workbench part. 
frick, um, a, an absolute fantastic game. Again, AEG, talk about it all the time. They're killing it. That's why it's my number 11 for this month, Whirling Witchcraft. Number 10 on my list, Overboss, a boss monster adventure. I played this several times last month um, because I was doing the solo campaign. We we're just talking about solo gaming. Solo campaign is a lot of fun. And I got to solo number four. This is the number, oh wait. Okay, this is actually the number two and three adventures that I did. Um, after this, I did number four. It took me four times to uh, complete that level. Four was tough for whatever reason. It's a tile laying game based in the overbot, or I mean the boss monster world. And as you can see there, it's got that really cool double drafting of tiles. So you have your main tile, then you have your monster tile, the little ones that go on there. And you're trying to match them all up very puzzly. Uh, one of the designers, Kevin Russ, is also behind Calico. So you'll see some similarities, but this one totally plays, uh, I mean, it's similarities in far, as far as like the double drafting is concerned, but this one's its own um, a game. It's, I can, you can totally, I mean, I have both of them in my collection. I love Calico. I love Overboss. Um, Calico is the prettier game. I mean, Beth Sobel, what are you gonna do? But uh, I wouldn't get it's like amazing. But this is cool because it, it does uh, tie into that 8 bit world of uh, video games. So uh, this is a really fun game. I highly recommend it. Brotherwise, they are um, another company recently that I feel like is just knocking it out of the park with all their designs. Uh, that's Overboss, um, uh, Boss Monster Adventure. That's uh, my number 10 for the month. And oh, there I am looking at the uh, actual, yeah, so this is where I'm level three. Level four, oh, so brutal, so brutal. Number nine on my games that I played that I'm ranking from last month is Shifty Penguins. This is my friend Daryl B. Gaiman's game, uh, a prototype. I really enjoyed this game. It's uh, area control um, plus uh, some hand management. It's a two player game. I think it's a really clever design. Uh, Daryl took this to Dice Tower West for, uh, as, uh, during the prototype section and he pitched it to some, some companies. Unfortunately, uh, no one bit, but I think, you know, uh, I mean, thankfully they had some interest in uh, some of his other games, which I'm really happy for him. But, you know, I, Daryl's a friend. I'm trying to, I, I, I always support him. He supports all the stuff I do. I legit think this is a rock solid game. Um, so hopefully he can either publish it himself or find a uh, company to work for. Really clever 15, 20 minute game. Okay, Shifty Penguins to number eight, Shards of Infinity Into the Horizon. Uh, this is a game that I played with Daryl actually off camera. Uh, I'm gonna hydrate real quick. He is a huge deck building fan. Uh, Daryl's a, a guy, type of guy, he's the one gamer I, well, actually no, I know a couple of gamers who has like basically every single Dominion expansion out there. Huge deck building fan. This is, if we're gonna go pure deck building, Shards of Infinity is definitely like top three for me. I love it. It plays faster than Dominion. I just, I, and then with these expansions that have come out, they give like the first expansion was asymmetric abilities. Uh, there was a second expansion that I uh, added like mercenaries, I believe it was, or maybe that was the first expansion. Mercenaries were cards that you could, instead of buying from the market, you just pay the cost and play it directly, immediately. And then into the horizon adds these sort of like almost um, not events, but they're also asymmetrical. Like uh, if you have enough um, uh, power or whatever it's called to get it, you it's like an ongoing ability, right? So you have your asymmetric abilities for your character. And then these are ones that you can take during the game as well. A really clever design. Um, Excuse me, Justin Gary, if you don't know that name, uh, he's the guy that basically launched um, Stoneblade Entertainment. Uh, Ascension was his design. Uh, he's a former Magic the Gathering like professional player, uh, so he knows his card games. And Shards, uh, if you haven't played Shards of Infinity, highly recommend. It is very uh, in your face, so I know like Rado or you know players that don't like that combat style, they won't like it. But apparently, is it this one? Or maybe the next expansion has a cooperative um, a mode as well. So I don't know if this has the co-op one. Maybe it's the next one. But I uh, I will always play Shards of Infinity. That's why it's my number eight game. Okay, let's move on, friends. Number seven is oh, Way Too Many Cats. Super cute game. This is a game by Weird Giraffe Games. It's now, it's uh, I think it's on its final days of the Kickstarter. So if you haven't backed it, uh, please uh, consider doing that. Um, it's along the lines of we just did Overboss uh, uh, um, a Boss Monster Adventure and 
we talk about Calico, this is similar to those games. It's very puzzly. It's got the tile lane, got the um, dual tile lane draft where you get uh, the tiles and you have the little tokens, which are the kittens and the toys and stuff. Super cute theme. Uh, obviously, you're looking at our prototype here. It's going to be very different uh, uh, when you get the game itself. I thought this was really super cute and puzzly. Uh, very easy to learn. Amanda and I played a game, a uh, two-player game during Gavi on Game Night. And then I also did this, uh, just a run-through, uh, Rado style, right after the R&R show one day. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think people are going to get a kick out of this. Um, and that is way too many cats from Weird Giraffe Games. Number six, friends, is, oh, a little Roddy, another paid preview that we did uh, during Tabletop Live Network. Um, a real-time spelling game, word game. You had me at hello. I love word games, and I think this is... Actually, they... I, I'm going to... Let me check it. Can I... Oh, yeah, I can do it right now. I've, I've got to check their Kickstarter for Illiterati because they crushed it, I think. Gap Closer Games. Yep. Wow. Oh, 171,000 after 15,000 gold. They crushed it. Um, this is going to be a hit. Uh, if you like, If you like word games. If you don't like word games, I don't think this will convert you. But for the word game nerds among us, this is fantastic. It's got this really cool theme. You're putting together books um, by combining and creating words, and it's a cooperative game. So maybe that'll, maybe that's why, um, maybe that'll help push it to non-word game uh, friends or, or gamers. Yeah, that might be it. Because you're a cooperative trying to use all the letters to spell words. You want certain combos of letters uh, to fulfill goals. And you have two um, uh, books that you want to complete. And then you have like a third, like final, like boss monster book or whatever you want to call it. It's real time. So you only have like, I think it was, you know, a couple of minutes uh, for each round. So it is, Michelle, I realized it's not as easy as it looked. I thought it, I thought we would rock this game. It was tough. Um, when we had to, you know, we, it was it was our first time, but wow, it was, uh, it was tougher than I thought. You also have those uh, illiterati who are like the bad guys. Uh, they come in, it's like um, an event each round that they're gonna mess with you. Like take out some letters or you can't, you have to rearrange letters or whatever. If at any time after any round you have leftover letters, uh, those go up here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Up here, those are burn letters. You burn three in a game, game over. Or four, I think. Uh, that, that's just the standard mode. You can go legendary mode, have way more uh, or fewer letters that you can burn. And so you better have your uh, you know best spellers out there. But anyways, it, it's, it's a really fun game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, that's my number six, Illiterati by Gap Closer Games. They they also did um, Rival Restaurants, which is a fun, another fun game that has a little real-time element to it. All right, let's move on to number five, Dice Miner. This is, this is coming as no surprise. Uh, this has been a huge hit ever since our friend Slivers sent us a copy. Uh, thank you again, Slivers. Cannot thank you enough for it. Um, Michelle and I really enjoy this game. And you know, I, I played it, th I, I like it at all player counts. I think I may like this best at two players. And I'll tell you why, because now it takes away from the whole beer element a little bit, because in the standard multiplayer game, you're choosing which player to give the beer to, um, which is giving a dice to. In a two player, it's, you know, there's no decision, you just give it to your fellow player. But what I like about this, by the time it's the third round, you literally have two fistfuls of dice in a two player game. It's so many dice, it's so much fun. Whereas the three and four player games, you, you have fewer dice. Um, it's definitely tougher at three and four because you have more opponents. But I just, I love rolling all those dice. Uh, it's a clever combination of dice drafting and set collection. And uh, you go from round to round building a pool or your trove of dice. Uh, Psychfish has a quick um, comment here. Word games can be almost like an abstract strategy where if you aren't well matched with your opponent, it just makes you feel dumb. So I could, yeah, uh, I, and that's true. Uh, you know, certain players would definitely have a built-in advantage, right? As far as like, you know, if they're Scrabble players or whatever, perhaps. But yeah, for um, a little Roddy, because it's co-op, I think that does solve some of that problem because you are working together. All right. Thank you, uh, Sackfish. Let's move on to our number four. That was Dice Miner. The Dice Miner, actually, I played, this was my go-to at uh, uh, Dice Hour West last week. I just, I had in my backpack, just as one of those, hey, in case there's some quick time, I know Dice Miner isn't readily available, just have it on me. And I, I was able to play it a few times and also teach it a few times, which is a real treat. Um, number four, Walking in Murano. Wow, I didn't expect to like this game as much as I did. It. I had recently gotten into Floriferous. 
I feel like this is very similar to that. It was almost, uh, I, I mean, I don't think Floris, Floriferous was based on this, but there's similar gameplay as far as uh, the cards are concerned. Uh, so you are walking along, uh, I think Verano is in Italy. Uh, you're looking at all the houses and it's very spatial, uh, a puzzle where you're trying to line up uh, the right houses with the right items, with the right colors. Uh, I'm gonna hydrate a second. Super thinky for what it is. I did not expect the thinkiness of this game uh, in a pleasant way. It was a pleasant surprise. Um, this was put out by, I think, Emperor 4 was the original publisher. And then AEG picked it up, and uh, that's where I got my copy. Here are some of the goals of uh, the game. Um, you know, you want uh, this one here. You get three points for every cat that's um, in a certain location. These are the buildings that you you have here. Here's the like the ground floor, then the roof, and the, the middle and stuff. Some of them are markets that you get uh, extra points for. Such a clever game, and it really surprised me in a great way, good way. Highly recommend if you can uh, find it. I don't know if it's out. No, I think it's still, it's still in print. Uh, beautiful, beautiful game. Uh, this is Walking in Burano. Okay, let's move on to number three. Yeah, our top three, folks. Next is Tapestry Arts and Architecture. I forgot how much I like Tapestry. When it first came out, I know some people loved it. Some people were like, man, it is a civilization game that plays so quickly. And now, having said that, saying quickly meaning like a two-player game can be like an hour to 90 minutes. Um, but it's just, it's really snappy. You're just, you just move up these tracks. There are four different tracks, uh, five with the new expansion arts and, arts and architecture. But you're moving up the tracks and it's all about timing. You really want to try to time, okay, if I move up this track, that'll help me move up on another track, which will help me get resources on this track. It, it's very, very cleverly done. Um, now, I know there were some issues of balance um, at, when it first came out, but apparently, you know, they have refined that. They've given like um, some factions, you get a little boost. Other factions, you get a little, you get a little nerf. And um, <clears throat> that's on the website and also in this new rule book for the expansion. They give you a reminder like, hey, don't forget if you're playing this faction, you know, take you get an extra resource or points or whatever. As you can see, Daryl and I played during Gavigal Game Night. This is such a table hog. Um, so it was tough for us to play on the, the streaming table here. But as we play, I was like, darn it. I remember how much I like this game. Uh, solo game as well. They use the Automa. It's a, uh, um, uh, get, you play against like two dummy players. Very, very solid game. I really enjoy this. It's, I forgot how much I enjoyed it. And that's why it's my number three, Tapestry Arts and Architecture. I also have the other expansion, Plans and Ploys, I think. I haven't played that yet. Definitely got to throw that in there. Uh, arts and Architecture, one quick thing to point out. It does add this arts track here which I really paid a lot of attention to and unfortunately I lost. So maybe in civilization, you don't, you can't care about the arts. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Uh, but Daryl, as he always does, he focused on military. Uh, so we had this military thing going on and I also, I tried to do the arts, uh, but he ended up winning. Okay, let's move on to my number two, Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. Um, this one I played solo. I didn't take a video or pictures of it, but it's, at this point, honestly, I think it's replaced Terraforming Mars, the base game for me. It gives me everything I want in Terraforming Mars that I love about Terraforming Mars in half the time and half the setup. Um, it is so well done and it adds, the one thing I really enjoy is this part here, if you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, ah, man, my mouse is all freaking out. Anyways, this part right here, uh, the action selection tiles of uh, it's very similar to Race for Galaxy, Roll for the Galaxy, where certain phrases are uh, certain phrases phases are triggered by each player, but you don't know which one. You go put them face down, then you reveal. Sometimes you double up on phase, and like sometimes you're like, oh, why didn't you trigger this one? I thought you were going to do that. And that's just added to the uh, brilliant uh, card-based engine building. Uh, here you're just trying to rate, you're trying to complete all three, just like the original game. Uh, all three tracks, temperature, um, oceans, and um, what's the other terraforming thing? Is it plants? Shoot, I forgot. Terraforming the, the uh, oceans. Uh, oh, oxygen. Oxygen, temperature, and oceans. Very, very good game. I mean, I, it's it's my number two of this past month. 
we did a solo uh, challenge for it. I did not have time to do the solo challenge. When I soloed it, it was like before the challenge and I didn't have time to do the solo challenge. Still love it. Absolute, absolutely fantastic game. And um, number one, we're gonna see what number one game is next, friends. And it is really surprised to me. Ready, set, bet. A John D. Clare game from AEG coming out during Gen Con this year, I believe, is the um, set time. Um, wow. This is game, if you like gambling, and you may know that I gambled back in the day, this game, to me, simulates, uh, gets the closest to simulating the thrill of gambling than any other game I've ever played. Uh, it's a real-time game where you're rolling dice to move horses. That's one part of the game. The big part of the game, though, is everyone, if you can see here, it's almost like a roulette or a craps layout. Everyone else, let me see if I can get a better look at that layout here. Uh, yeah, this one? Yeah. Everyone in real time has uh, bet markers. They're going to go on the board in real time and place their bets. So if you see the number four horse out to an early lead, this is the question. Do you put a bet first? Because there can only be one bet per square. Do you get that like four to one odds right off the bat? I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Uh, as you can see here, so the number 10 horse. If you're the first person to bet on number 10, you're going to get seven to one odds. If someone's already put one there, there uh, on there, you have to go to the next one, six odds. And those to win. You can play, you can bet places uh, on place, which is first or second, or you can bet a, a bet on show, which is first, second, or third. Uh, to live in nice and LA just says, I need this game. Yeah, to live in nice and LA. Now, if your family likes gambling, like my family uh, uh, does, uh, you know, we used to, we go, used to go to the racetrack. This one was an absolute thrill. And honest, okay, so I've played it twice. Once at a, a play test here in LA, a second time in Vegas uh, at the AEG house as a play test uh, during Dice Tower West. Both games, within the first minute of the game, people were shouting. And that's the type of the game this is. If you want your quiet, chill, Euro style brain burner, this is not it. This is a party game, but with really nice gamer elements to it. And I remember Michelle and I, when we first played it, seriously, we we're like, come on, four, come on, five. You know, it's just, and everyone around us, it's such a thrill. I cannot hype this game enough. I absolutely love this. Um, Amanda says, okay, let me, uh, that, that was a great point. Amanda does say, uh, let me get that. I, I want to put this comment up here, Amanda, that, um, and Amanda has been part of the team that was uh, play testing it. The, uh, there will be an app so no one has to roll for horses if everyone wants to bet. Yeah, so normally one player would be handling the horses, but with the app, they'll, you can take care of that, which will be a great help. Oh gosh, it's so fun. Um, you can see here that um, there are different, there's uh, these things down here, uh, different uh, special bets that you can place, like uh, where horses land as far as like, okay, maybe this your horse that you pick cannot be more than three spots behind, you know, whatever horse. Up here, you can bet on colors. So either there's a group of groups of colors. So maybe you want the blue horses to win. You may get two to one for those. Then there are the exotic bets, which uh, if you know racetrack terminology, like exactas, um, it's not exactly like an exacta, <laughs> exactly like an exacta, but you have certain combinations. Like you want the yellow horses to finish before the blue horses and so forth. Oh my gosh. Yeah, James had mentioned Long Shot the Dice Game. Long Shot the Dice Game is a fantastic roll and write slash race game. This one to me just feels more like a gambling party game. So both are perfect, or both can fit in a collection for different needs. Um, also, I didn't even mention, this also has uh, player abilities, uh, unique uh, asymmetric player abilities. So after the first race, you just do your, uh, it's like a normal race, um, you know, play it out. Then after that, everyone's going to get two cards. You're going to select one. One of them may be, hey, I get a second a uh, second token that I can place anywhere, including on someone else's bet. Or you can have a, a special ability like anytime the player or the app rolls snake eyes or box cars, you get a dollar. It's like free money. Uh, there's another ability uh, that uh, you can play. Uh, you can bet after like, uh, so you can only bet until like each until I think one horse or three horses have gone past like the certain line. Another ability is you can place bets after that fact. Oh my gosh, so, so good. I I cannot rave against about this game. I mean, I've gone, I've gone on forever already, but I cannot rave enough about this game. It's supposed to come out during Gen Con. 
for me it's a must buy and it's gonna i honestly i think it's gonna replace um a lot of party games for me especially when uh hanging out with my family because i know they're gonna love this one here that is ready set bet from aeg coming out later this year hopefully by uh, gen con time uh so that is it Okay, friends, thank you. That is that, Those were the games that I played this last month. I'm going to catch up on chat here. Uh, just give me a second. Thanks again for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Slackfish said, um, yeah, this feels... Whoops. Why is this... Now it's not... Okay. Good old feature chat. Not working again. Come on, feature chat. Where are you at? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not working. Yay, feature chat. Let me uh, refresh... Oh, at least it works some of the time uh, this time. Anyways, um, Saxon said, yeah, this feels more like serious gambling where uh, Long Shot the Dice game is a bit more camel up. Yeah, and that's that's the difference. Like, I think I really liked Long Shot the Dice game. I thought it was really clever and does have that horse racing element to it. And it's a really cool race game. This is uh, Ready, Set, Bet really captures that gambling feel, at least for me. Um, Panda says, yeah, it's like roulette plus horse racing. Yep. And uh, just played three games of Long Shot the Dice. Oh, you, oh, it's did you, you got your copy? Awesome, nice. Uh, to live in Dice in LA, my cousins would love this. Yeah, uh, again, uh, I, my family too. To live in Dice in LA, they're they're gonna love this. Uh, Slackfish is top three games from. Oh yeah, folks, please share your top three games from uh, February with me. Slackfish says there his top three: Eclipse, Gugon, and Bad Company. I don't know what Bad Company is except for a '70s uh, rock group, but um, Gugon. Have not played in a while, really enjoyed that one. And Eclipse, still haven't played it. I still have not played that. Uh, James says, 80% of the time works 100% of the time. Nice, James. Uh, going back on comments here, John DeClaire looks like it will be, yeah. John DeClaire is one of my favorite uh, designers these days. To live in Dice Alley reminds me, reminds me so much of my grandpa, like launch out the dice game. I have to keep an eye out. Yeah, this one uh, definitely, definitely grew up on that, yeah. Definitely grew up the races. Uh, to live in Dyson, LA, my family, like my brothers and I, we used to go to the San Anita racetrack on the regular. You know, uh, my dad, uh, funny, fun fact, uh, maybe I should say this for the R&R &R show. No, I'll, I'll let you know. Fun fact, my very first computer was bought because my dad won at the racetrack. <laughs> he hit the daily double or something at San Anita and came home and said, let's go buy a computer. Like, oh, okay, cool. So really, it was so many fond memories. Uh, Linnea says Eris Expedition. Uh, oh yeah, the expansion. Rado was just talking about that. Um, yeah, er th everything about Eris Expedition I love, and I, I can't wait to see what the expansion does. Okay, so the feature chat thing is just broken, dead. Uh, played a couple of games of Base Tapestry last month. Slackfish said nice. Uh, Slackfish, do you have you soloed it? Do you do you solo that as well? And. Um, I think I'm gonna call it, folks. I think, uh, let me see, anyone? Slackfish grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. So yeah, horse racing, yeah. Still one of my dreams, uh, one of these days, go to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I, I wanna see at least one. I, I think it'd be, I know it's insanely crowded and all that, but just, I wanna drink a mint julep there. You know, maybe I'll, you know, br hopefully bring Michelle, wear a crazy hat. Uh, Slackfish has solo tapestry, nice. Uh, February for Zhao is Imaginarium. Machi Coral 2 and Ex Libris. Hey, Ex Libris. Another book theme game. I'm always a big fan of book theme games. Haven't played Machi Coral 2 yet. And Imaginarium have not played. Um, told him, yeah, my grandpa won a jackpot 2 the year I was born. Nice. Yeah, we used to always, it was funny, like, you know, thinking about like pick sixes. That was always the big thing. And uh, I had an, uh, one of my aunts. Um, she was more of a high roller than some of us were, but so she would sit in like the fancy section, but sometimes uh, she would, hey, invite the kids up and we get to go, you know, dine with her and stuff. That was always fun. Um, to the of dice, Mike and I just played a few rounds of Eclipse last night in preparation for playing with my brother-in-law. Oh, cool, really enjoyed it, nice. James Terraform Mars, Terra's uh, Air's Expedition, Under Falling Skies and In Gentle Rain. I got to see A Gentle Rain, someone who played that. It was Legends brought his copy and taught it to Pia and Andrew from uh, Board Game Span. It looks so pretty and I, I really want that game. Hey. Friends, let me see if I've caught up. If I missed your comment, I am sorry. But I have a meeting scheduled at 11 a.m., which I'm late for right now, but it was some real pleasure to hang out with y'all. Thank you again. Uh, Murray Meow Time just followed. We're gonna give him an analog alert, Murray. Uh, we'll give them an analog alert. 
you're not if you're here for the first time, this is Felicia the Followfish Murray. Felicia the Followfish is one of our analog alerts um, here on the channel, and she swims around, says hello to new followers, then she swims away, and all of us, including y'all in chat, we say bye, Felicia. Thanks for the follow, Murray. Thanks for the bye, Felicia's in chat. Nice seeing everyone here. If you don't already, please join our Discord. Uh, our friend James and Legends uh, host um, solo challenges. If you're in a solo gaming, we have a Hadrian's Wall solo challenge right now that's going on for one more week. I'm hoping I get my copy. I don't know where it is, um, but remember, this isn't it. I'm not done streaming today. This one right here, R2-D2, we're going to start building this. Michelle and I will be back tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific. Same bat channel, different time. And uh, let's find someone to raid. Um, appreciate y'all. This is a different time for me to be streaming, so I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Uh, who shall we raid now? Boo -doo -doo -doo. Blunderbuss TV. That is, we got to raid Blunderbuss. Uh, that is Nick, Mike Murphy, and Paula Deming, and Matthew Jude. That's... There, yeah, Blunderbuss, they are, they are up, I think. Um, let me see. Yeah, there they are. We're going to raid Blunderbuss. Thank you again, friends, so much for hanging out with me. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you all tonight so we can build our two and maybe play some games and chat about games again. Um, stick around for the raid. Let me get it started right now. Looks like Nick and Mike are on playing the video games. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you later for R2. Bye.